Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this video, we're going to be looking at ideal gas adiabatic processes. And these are simply processes in which there's no heat transfer where we're considering only ideal gases. So the starting point for this is our first law of thermodynamics, and we're going to write this in differential form. So a differential change in internal energy is equal to some differential heat transfer minus some differential work. And we can say that this dq is equal to zero because we specified that we're only looking at adiabatic processes. Now we can expand out both the du and this delta w by changing du to cv dt and changing the dw to p dv. And our next step is to take this pressure and recognize that this is an ideal gas, which means that our pressure is equal to rt divided by specific volume. So we can say that this cv dt is equal to a negative rt times dv over v. And this form here is really nice because we know if we integrate this, we'll end up with the natural log of v. And our next step is just to take this t and divide it over. So we'll end up with a cv times dt over t, which is going to be equal to a negative r times dv over v. And then, like I said, we can integrate both of these sides. And we can specify the bounds of this integration as moving from state 1 to state 2. So for the left-hand side, that's from t1 to t2. And for the right-hand side, that's v1 to v2. So performing this integration, we end up with cv times the natural log of t2 minus the natural log of t1, which is equal to a negative r times the natural log of v2 minus the natural log of v1. And of course, with logarithms, we can rewrite these as ratios. So this will be cv times the natural log of t2 over t1, which is equal to a negative r times the natural log of v2 over v1. And again, using our logarithm rules, this also means that t2 over t1 to the cv power is equal to v2 over v1 to the negative r power. So that's a pretty good stopping point, but we're going to go a step further than this. We have a definition that cp over cv is equal to gamma, and we have a identity that cp is equal to cv plus r. So using these two together, we can say that gamma times cv, which is this cp term, is going to be equal to cv plus r. Next step, we move this cv over and take out the gamma minus 1. And so we get gamma minus 1 times cv is equal to r. And then finally, we can solve for CV. And so with that, what we can do is we can divide out the power of R on both sides and end up with V2 over V1 is equal to T2 over T1 to the CV over R power, right? So that's the CV divided by R. So 1 over gamma minus 1. And we keep that negative, and so we get a negative 1 on the top. So this is one of the equations that we can use for adiabatic processes. Now we're going to have three of these, and together they're going to be known as the adiabatic relations. Now if you look online, what you'll probably be more likely to see is the isentropic relations. And that's because the normal way of deriving this uses entropy and a constant entropy process. But this version avoids entropy since we haven't discussed that yet and allows us to just look at adiabatic ideal gas processes. 
So we have a relationship between temperature and volume. We'd also like to get a relationship between temperature and pressure. So in order to do that, we go back to the ideal gas law and we write it as a ratio. So we say P2 over P1 times V2 over V1 is equal to R T2 over R T1. And of course these R's cancel out. And so we're left with P2 over P1 is equal to T2 over T1 multiplied by V1 over V2. So dividing out this V2 over V1 to the other side. And then what we can do is we can write this V1 over V2 using this relationship right here. And so this is also equal to T2 over T1 multiplied by T2 over T1 to the one over gamma minus one power. And so the V1 over V2 is swapped from what we have up here. And so we're able to swap it back and get rid of that negative sign. So that's why we have uh, T2 over T1 instead of T1 over T2. And this is T2 over T1 to the one power. And so we can rewrite that as T2 over T1 to the gamma minus one over gamma minus one which means that this P2 over P1 is gonna be equal to T2 over T1 to the gamma over gamma minus one power. That's the second of our isentropic relations. And then finally, with these two together, we can write P2 over P1 is equal to V2 over V1 to the negative gamma power. And that's the final relationship. So we have those three isentropic or adiabatic relations, which we can use whenever we're looking at adiabatic processes, which are things that are going to very frequently come up in the future as we start looking at auto and diesel cycles. Now, one more thing that we're gonna be interested in looking at is the amount of work done during an adiabatic process. And there's a shortcut to this that we'll get to but let's start looking at work in our most general form. We know that work is equal to mass times the integral of V1 to V2 of P dV. Now, right away, we get to use one of our adiabatic relationships in order to swap out this P for a V. So we're gonna say that P2 is gonna be P and V2 is gonna be V. So where we end up from this is that W is going to be equal to M times the integral from V1 to V2 of P1 over V1 to the negative gamma multiplied by V to the negative gamma. That's multiplied by dV. And again, this came from saying that this pressure here could be used with our adiabatic relationship to link it to V over V1, all of that to the negative gamma. Now, all of this is constant, so we get to move it outside of the integral. And so we end up with work being equal to mass times our pressure times V1 to the gamma. And all that we're left with is this V to the negative gamma. And so we can write that integral as v to the one minus gamma, since we add one to integrate a polynomial, and then we divide by one minus gamma to complete that integral. And then this is being integrated from v equal to v1 up to v equal to v2. So now we're gonna expand this out, and we're gonna say that our work is equal to m p1 v1 to the gamma divided by one minus gamma, right? So that takes out that constant piece there. And then we can say that V to the one minus gamma is V divided by V to the gamma. So we write that for V2, and then we subtract off the same thing for V1. And now we're gonna distribute this P1 V1 to the gamma. So we leave this M over one minus gamma out front, and then we're gonna have P1 times V2 multiplied by V1 over V2 to the gamma. So the P1 comes over, we get the V2 from here, and then V1 over V2, both of those are to the gamma. 
Then we subtract off, and this time the V1 to the gamma is going to cancel out. And so we're left with P1 V1. And now we get to use our adiabatic relationship again. So this entire chunk is exactly this V2 over V1 to the negative gamma. So this is P2 over P1, which means that this P1 is going to cancel out with this P1. And we're going to be left with M over 1 minus gamma times P2 V2 minus P1 V1. Now, the next thing we're going to do is recognize that PV is equal to RT because of the ideal gas law. So this first term is RT2, and the second term becomes an RT1. And so we can say that the work is equal to M over 1 minus gamma multiplied by RT2 minus RT1, which we can promptly rewrite as M times R over gamma minus 1, but we need to take out that negative because we're swapping that, multiplied by T2 minus T1, or delta T. Well, if we're looking for R over gamma minus 1, that's exactly this CV term that we have up top. So this term right here is CV. And so the work is negative M CV delta T, which we can finally recognize as a negative delta U, which, like I said, there's a shortcut, right? We can go back to our very first statement here and integrate this statement, and we would say that the work that we get is equal to a negative delta U. So the change in internal energy is exactly due to whatever work we apply for an adiabatic process. So in order to find the properties as we move through that adiabatic process, we use the adiabatic relations. But if all we care about is the amount of work, then we can just go straight to delta U, which we also write as CV delta T. So this is a brief overview of adiabatic processes. Like I said, we're going to be using this as we analyze auto cycles and diesel cycles which will be the next couple of steps as we work through thermodynamics. In any case, I hope this was helpful, and I will catch you next time.